here. All right, so we here with Phil Pena. Uh, what place you came in? Uh, I was seventh after Swiss, and I lost in top 16, so probably like last. Last. So if okay. I do the math, yeah, carry the one, <laughs> dead last. You want to show us the deck you played today? Yeah, so uh, I ended up playing Hoenna Kite. In testing, it was like just really hard to beat with a lot of decks. And uh, unfortunately, the deck that we found that can beat it, uh, I wasn't really too comfortable playing. I'm more of like a grind player, and the black card just seemed more grindy and more drain energy to me. Uh, so that's what I ended up doing. I got some. Uh, I got pretty far, but not far enough. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I guess we'll go through the deck. Uh, I played... Three devourments, that's just for generic blockers. Uh, they kind of suck in the Hoenna mirrors because they add counters, uh, but they do get to you fuel your draw power with the labs against the other control decks. Uh, and generically, just a pretty good card. Uh, then I played three Avarice. Um, they were just a discard power, probably like the best, uh, one of the best golems I had in my deck. Uh, they were able to let you get advantage in the control decks and prove a big body to the aggro decks and the mid range decks. Also, discarding a random card hurts a lot of the time. So. Uh, I played uh, two allurements. Uh, I guess let me just move this. <clears throat> I played uh, two allurements. They just steal little guys. I thought that that would be super powerful over the course of the tournament between everybody with their one drop blockers and um, just, you know, the light token. Stealing the guys seem really important. Also, it's just more fodder for Hidden Lab that you don't mind having in the graveyard because you can always yummy it back at instant speed. So. Uh, and then I was like kind of super scared of Juggernaut. I thought that was like the best card to beat the stack. Like not even the blue deck, just Juggernaut. So I main deck two in indolences. They were like trying to get over the Juggernaut. A lot of the players understood what was going on. So they would like Juggernaut with five mana or so. Mm -hmm. and Or leave up multiple blockers where the Juggernaut didn't matter. But in every other situation, it's pretty good in mid-range decks. Uh, I felt like in these sort of mirrors, you want to affect the board before Sylphia happens. And the only way to do that is play things before four mana or on four mana to make them force them to have Sylphia or lose the game by not having Sylphia. And this is the one of cards that do it because it fights for the board really well. So, uh, I only played two Guard Hound. Uh, I conceded that aggro probably wasn't the best choice, but I still needed cards for it. Uh, as you'll see later in the deck, some of the choices I made because I didn't really con like think aggro was a very good deck. Also, it's just a good generic attacker and a great card you can bring from Yami because you get to block. So uh, Then I was able to get two uh, Demon of the Evil Eye. Uh, this card was worth it. It, it. it was just so insane how a lot of people play with their hands face up because they play like they leave two mana open in their yellow deck or... They have like six mana in their blue deck, and like it's very obvious to tell what cards have. Also, people playing Gillian, which shows you a lot of cards. People can hit the Dark Tower, or you have, if you have Vengeance, you get to see cards. Um, so it's very easy to tell. Also, like there's a lot of spots where the better you are at the game, the better this card becomes because yeah. you get to call Yami like by turn five if they never had two open mana. You get to call Yami, and then they probably haven't had a chance to play it, so they have multiple Yamis in their hand because you keep that card in a mulligan or any removal spells. Uh, it's great because in the mirror match, they go Sophia bounce. You get the Sophia with a turn after, which is really nice. It's guaranteed draw there. It doesn't make up advantage. And the really, really big thing is it's 3K, which uh, deals with Juggernaut. You get to attack, and if they block, the Juggernaut just dies, which is a really good trade, like one for one. You draw a card because you hit the card, and you're attacking the Juggernaut. So it's a really, really good thing. Uh, I would consider this going to three. It's just uh, there's not many spots to play it in the deck. So yeah, really good card. Uh, then I play One Vengeance. Honestly, this was probably like one of the best monsters in the deck. I played a lot of control mirrors, and even in the mirror match itself, uh, you, the games tend to go more grindy pre-board. Pre uh, so you're able to hit cards, and a lot of times you either Rudy with this or have two golems, so you do get to get two cards. And then once you pick apart their, their hand, you can play around everything else or, <clears throat> or demonize the rest of the cards, and they just can't play the game. So really strong card. I would think about bumping this up. Uh, the best, like... Augment, uh, Hidden Laboratory, easy stable card. You know, you draw cards, you, you get golems, it's for free. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, I main deck one Brain White Beam. Uh, in testing, what I found out the mirror match to be was just like Rudy based, where you want to control Rudy and everybody uses their outs on Rudy, but he can't remove it, so they just shot me back or returning shadows back. Uh, so the best way I felt to deal with that Rudy uh, was just take it because then they can't interact with it, or if they do, they two for one themselves, right? Because they kill the Rudy they played and they play the removal spell. Uh, so that was really what the concession was because I thought there was going to be a lot of mirrors and I really built my deck to go over the mirrors. Uh, so this was just another way to do it. Uh, probably the worst card in the deck because it only happened like uh, so often. Uh, but when it did happen, it was a real game changer. So <laughs> it's, it's just, I don't know. Um, and then uh, three Dust Strikes. I went with three Dust Strikes specifically. Uh, so as you saw in the monsters, because that's all the black monsters, I didn't play any one drops. So it was kind of hard to play in the early game. Yeah. But like I said, it's that Rudy... Uh, mentality where if I go hidden lab on two on three I want to be able to answer your Rudy when you play Rudy or on four I can play a devourment and a dust strike um, 
So I really wanted to be able to answer all the Rudys. And I thought three was the best number because it gives me that playability to answer Rudy. And it's cool against the blue decks because you get to get Mr. Kins on the stack when they play it so they can't bounce it. Or if they ate your surface breath, they can't see the top card of the deck to stack with, mm -hmm. uh, which is nice. Um, and it gets the blockers out of the way. Oh, most of the big cards in the game are 25, so it's pretty good there. I also gets Sylph and stuff like that. So I, I like that three, I would keep it at three. Even though I had no one drops in my deck, which made it harder to play, it's still a good card at three. Yeah. Uh, and then probably the best spell in, in the deck, uh, three Yami. There's nothing to explain about that. That card's just insane. Uh, I played two Miasmas. Uh, it was really good versus aggro, and it, it's really good in the mirror. That Rudy thing I keep harping on was so important because it steals with Rudy and another card. So they can't like double average you because you get to kill the Rudy and probably the other Golem. Uh, kills Watchwoman and their other guys. You can crack the Light Tower and kill that too. Um, and it's really, really good against blue because, I mean, it's not really good I side out anyway, but in game one, because I have Indolence, so on turn five, they feel safe to drop their Juggernaut. On turn four, I get to uh, uh, debility my eyes with the other two guys, and then my uh, guy will be able to attack over the Juggernaut because it gets the other blockers out of the way. Um, pretty good card. I consider it going to three because it's obviously that good in other decks, but if blue is the meta, I probably just want to cut down on it. Okay. Then a really, really good card I had was uh, Soul Transfer. Um, this card let me get two for ones in the mirror, which eventually ended up to like the getting advantage because I don't have Fizzy, so I can't draw too many cards, but the two for ones really mattered because killing their guy is super important. And in the play where de like people, other people had Demon Eye, so they Demon Eye my Sylphia, I was able to kill the, the Demon Eye and get the Sylphia back, and now bounce it with the Kite. So now I still have Sylphia, and you had you thought you had your out, but I still have Sylphia. Um, also, it's cool because like no one expects this in the meta, so when they Demon Eye, they, they call whatever card they want, you just show them this, the out to it next turn. And then you get like Watcherman back, you get another Average, you get that Rudy back, uh, you get all your good cards. Uh, this would obviously be better with like if I played a Jealousy or a One Drop, just in case I had the Soul Transfer Little Guys. Um, but it was really good. Out Iskandar a lot because I play Zephyr Crystals. So you get to pop the cards that matter that block the um, uh, the prevention effect, and then you get to soul transfer and get whatever guy you want. So it's pretty nuts. Um, yeah, deal with a lot of problematic cards. Hard answer to most cards, and it's a two for one, which is what you want in this deck. Uh, and that's all for the black cards. Uh, then I played two Great Hawk of Cloud Sea. Just a very good generic card you can get off of Yami. It's probably just just strictly uh, they didn't give you shit about playing the alpha demo one? Yeah. Uh, no, you, I think the ruling is you can play all the same, you can play any alpha and any ones as long as it's not the towers because they have to be the same, but your deck can consist of any of the alpha and regular printing cards. So. Okay. Uh, it sucks because I only have one alpha anyway. So. <laughs> these, these, I have three copies of this card in my current possession, and they're all three different types. I have an alpha, a regular intro deck, and a large. Uh, then I was able to get two Nanosters for the tournament. Uh, this is probably like the best mid-range creature uh, green has to offer. Uh, unless you tap down guys, kill guys, restore two mana for like Yami or maybe the three Dust Strike, which is really important. And lets you restand for the Zephyr Crystal, so if you want to like kill a guy and then restand two so you have the three for Zephyr Crystal, because you normally leave the Corona Shard up a lot. Uh, he lets you do that. Um, also, with Rudy comes down with a lot, and like the later the game goes, the better this card comes because it has more counters, and you were able to play through their removal. Right with Demon of the Evil Eye, you call removal effects or Vengeance, you take the removal out, and then Natsu comes down and is able to have six or seven counters and just take over the game. So super good card. Uh, best green card, Sylphia the God. It's just the God. Like, uh, and then sadly, I played uh, Omega Magic Kazi. Uh, while this card is insanely good. Uh, it's only really good versus aggro or people trying to kill you, so I would I would have much rather it in my board. Uh, most of the time I had to pay two mana to draw a card on like a person they weren't attacking. There was a lot of control decks here, and there wasn't a lot of mid-range decks. Like I only played a couple of Hoana. Um but the card's still really, really good. It's just not good in this current meta. So. Uh, and that's the eight green cards. And then for normals, I play, um, or Argent Rares or whatever, I play... Uh, Rudy, most insane card in the deck, lets all your effects trigger because this is more an arrive deck. That's all your effects trigger twice, and they're all so meaningful that triggering twice is like game breaking. You know what I mean? So, uh, and you normally you just try to like float this as much as possible. So. And then uh, two Watchwomen, I need to end the game somehow, and you get to attack over guys and just kill them. So. Uh, that's the main deck. 40 cards. Uh, I guess we'll end the side deck now. Uh, my side deck I kind of devoted was like half aggro, half control, because I thought like in the mirror match, I only side one card and that's it, because my deck is so catered to, uh, or I side two cards maybe, 
Uh, but my deck is so catered to like beating the mirror match, so I thought like maybe if people want to go down, I side down. If people want to go up, I side up. So that's what you'll kind of find a common theme on my sideboard. Uh, I play two Acid Monger for like the augment aggressive decks, like against Liam Kite. You specifically need a body and a kill spell uh, for the augment. You don't have time to wait for Zephyr Crystal because on two you need to kill the um, War Room. So super important to have that. Uh, I didn't main deck the late poisons because I thought it was a really bad card in the mirror match because of Zephyr Crystal and the game goes late, you draw those bad cards. Like uh, I had a lot of my opponents saying, oh, I drew like too many bricks so I drew fail goal number one and delay poison in the mirror match like late game. I don't have those cards in my deck so I can't do that. But I did decide to side uh, three delayed poison. Uh, because it is versus aggro. If my deck needs to like side down or play against aggro, this card does fit mana curves really well and is a really good card because they won't be able to Zephyr Crystal in the beginning of the game. So. Okay. Uh, I cited one more Hellhound for um, the aggro decks. It's just a generic body. It's just another good card, you know. Uh, I cited two Poison Strikes against the decks that attack or block a lot. So like it's pretty good versus uh, blue decks because they have a lot of the little blockers to stay stymie your pressure. So you're able to kill the blocker, get the attack on the tower, and make them discard a card. All for one card, which seems kind of insane yeah, in value. Is it, what is it, like a two-for-one? Yeah, yeah, it's a two-for-one actually, but like in tempo-wise, it's way more because you get to crack a tower too. And like you're going to go to time with those games. So the more towers you crack, the better you are. Um, and But generically, it's just, just for aggro decks, really. Uh, could be bumped into third one. It's just that, uh, I lacked a lot of early game, so you want more early game to support this. This way, like on turn two, you can attack with your jealousy. They block or something because they think they have a value block, and then you just dust strike it or uh, poison strike it. So. Uh, I play one Philosopher's Stone. This is the concession that other people don't have Zephyr Crystal in their deck that comes in. Uh, so it came in for every blue deck without Kite. Uh, every deck without Kite, pretty much it came in. Even the decks that like had one Zephyr Crystal in their uh, Crystal deck or whatever, <clears throat> this still came in because it comes in to play tap, so it gives you a turn of reprieve to actually play the uh, Stone. Uh, it's probably better with the one-drop Golems, but it was still fine in my deck. Uh, and now it goes into like the more controlling package. I said another Vengeance. This card was like, well, like I said, in, in, during the main deck, it was really the MVP. And uh, the destroy of text is like really important to end games when you're controlling them. Uh, and it's really good versus the blue decks because it's 40k, so they can't really block it with Juggernaut value. Um, and it just rips their hand. And if you ever get to take two cards or root it, you're just way ahead. So uh, Then I decided some spice, some real spice. Uh, Harbinger of the Valley or I think, yeah, Valbrail. Um, this card was super good in the control decks because it goes to time, so it's a tower check. So you're able to flip your leader face down because once you get to a certain turn, your win encounters don't matter because you never get them because uh, they're always like bouncing your guys or interacting at instant speed before you can crack towers. Uh, and if you go through hit, two hidden labs, <clears throat> Uh, you probably won't see the third one, so you get to flip your uh, Hoenna face down to restore your Dark Tower and your Kite face down because you really don't need to Corona in those matchups uh, to get two towers. So that's like two more life. So you have to kill, uh, so you have six life in general, so now you have uh, eight life, which is kind of crazy. Uh, it's also a Guardian, it can't be interacted with spells, so it can't Soul Transfer, they can't Dust Strike, you know, and stuff. And it's 50k, which is huge, and, and it's bigger than Juggernaut, so you can just attack with it, which is really nice. And the blue decks can't really interact with it. So uh, Then I play one Tafriel, uh, the other um, legendary unit from the thing. Uh, this was cool because uh, in playtesting, I found that a lot of times uh, the Hoenna decks keep their boss monster in hand, like Sylvia or Mayu, to try to kind of loop it. So when you do run out of the same playability of Hoenna, you get to just turn the face down and play that boss monster. So now you've played six mana plus eight mana worth of spells and, or effects. Or in Sylvia's case, 8 mana plus 4 mana. And you get two really powerful effects. You get two Argent Rares worth of effects. Uh, and worst case scenario, if those cards are lost and behold to you in your graveyard, and you haven't been able to Corona Shard, you can just get it back to the graveyard by flipping your Kite face down. Because Kite doesn't really have too much playability. Um, and then it just, the biggest thing for me is that it can attack over Juggernaut the turn because it has Brawler. And it's 5k, so they can't value trade that either. And the Brawler text is really relevant in most cases. Even though I didn't like use the Rhyme effect, uh, I was still able to attack over things. Uh, and it'd just be a huge body that I can't deal with because not, not a lot of other people played Soul Transfer, so there's not a lot of hard outs to it. So. Really, really strong card. Uh, another card, the one card aside for the mirror, really, was just the Soul Transfer. Um, it's just like before, it's just value. You two for one your opponent, they'll eventually run out of cards before you do because you're two for one in them. So it's just another incentive to do something like that. And the more people that had Demon Eye and the more people that had like Vengeance in their deck, this card became way better because uh, you would draw it like they would obviously take it if they had in your opening hand, but because you have labs. You were able to dig for it, like draw three more cards before your turn, and then try to soul transfer their thing, and then it's a six drop lets you play your whole deck pretty much. It's really nice. Uh, and then because I was super scared of Juggernaut, my last two cards were uh, I played one Golem Bag, Arrogance. This card lets you out Juggernaut if they have no more board, so you might as well the two blockers, and then you play a Golem to like maybe discard their hand or something, like an Avers. 
and then you have less hand in them because you're, you're just not as good at the control deck as the Gillian deck or the Jamal deck. And you play this, you make them sack the um, Juggernaut, and you make them discard a card, which is like super value. And it's just a big guy, so it's pretty nice. Uh, mainly just to deal with Juggernaut. Uh, and then with Rudy, it's kind of insane, no matter what deck you play against. And then one Garga. I didn't main deck Garga because I felt like Nanatsu was way better mid range card, and like I thought I was going to play a lot of mirrors, but I did make the concession that I was scared of Juggernaut. And this card kind of keeps both players playing the five mana every turn. Mm -hmm. And because the Gillian decks and Jamal decks have so many high drops, it's harder for them to play with the five mana and not more. And you can play with the five mana really easy because you have a. Uh, like Avarice and uh, more like Yamis and there's like a lot of two mana spells in your deck so you're able to play like that. Uh, and that's the cards. And I guess we have to talk about the other cards too, right? So I played um, the normal towers. Uh, I didn't feel like any of the new towers were good. The dark one was cool because it was a big body for aggro, but like I said, I conceded the fact that aggro was a good deck. Um, so I didn't really need it. And I thought the effect was cool in the mirror match that if they crack it, you get to get Rudy. But only really Avarice can crack it, so everything else scouts towers. Uh, so they'll be able to see it and wait till we have even towers or like I'm going for a game shot block it and then crack my tower before it can activate. So I thought it was useless. Uh, and then the green one I thought was cool, but it's just not worth to trade out the temple for the air tower. Sometimes the air tower doesn't bounce anything, but sometimes it does for Demon Eye. And like having both this dark tower and this air tower uh, specifically lets your Demon Eye be way better. And your Vengeance too, so it's pretty nice. Uh, yeah, I guess you can side the dark one, but I didn't like it. And then my shards were just the three special shards, uh, the six regular ones, and then one Corona. Yeah. You want to tell me about that token on the side? <laughs> uh, just, just the fill face. <laughs> That's, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, hopefully you'll see us in Columbus, I think it's the next one. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll come with some spicy tech there. Uh, see you then. See you then.